So the, these specific experiments is designed to sort of determine how the genes act in early pregnancy. So they're going to try and use this gene editing technology to turn genes on and off and see how this affects early human development. Now the reason they're doing this is to understand more about how humans develop in the very, very early stages. So we know that only 13% of fertilized embryos survive the first trimester of pregnancy, but we don't know why this is. So these scientists want to try and help sort of solve that mystery by investigating the roles of particular groups of genes. And it is hoped that this will lead to treatments for infertility and also to treatments that can reduce miscarriage rates. But I don't think this concern is justified for this particular study, and that's because the study is occurring in the UK. The UK has a unique sort of legal position around the world in that it will allow limited forms of embryo research using gene editing, but it's got a complete ban on all reproductive uses of these technologies. So if this particular research was going to lead to design of babies in the UK, we need to change the law, and the law would need to change to allow reproductive uses of these technologies. And in a democracy like the UK, that's not going to happen if there's really strong opposition to those uses. Now, um, some people, uh, myself included, think that, well, if it does turn out these technologies are safe, that they're shown that we can reduce rates of disease in future generations with them, then maybe a time will come where we think we should change the law to allow their reproductive purposes. But that's not going to be for a long, long time. We're only in the infancy of these technologies for human use. The first thing I'll say about it is that, well, we are already changing um, the genes of future generations. So we change the human germline, which is the types of genes that get inherited. Um, we change that all the time through human sexual reproduction. We all have these random mutations. And certain activities that we allow in a political environment increase the number of these mutations we pass on to future generations. So we know delaying paternity, for instance, older fathers pass on a greater number of random germline mutations to their children than younger fathers. We know that smokers pass on a greater number of random germline mutations than non-smokers. So these types of changing the genes of future generations, we're already trying to do it. Um, it is an issue of consent, but obviously future generations aren't in a position to give or withhold their consent for these type of changes. And in that situation, we generally think we should just be acting in the best interest of future generations. Let me just touch on the sort of tech, the history of the technology, because this has been very much at the fore. So when this technology was first used in animal cells, you'd look at the animal cells and there'd be a large number of what's called off-target mutations. So it wasn't just changing the gene that we were targeting, it was changing all these other genes. And obviously, if that's going to be the case, where it's making lots and lots of random mutations, we think that's not going to be safe enough for humans to ever use. But very, very quickly, scientists have figured out ways to reduce the number of off-target mutations. And now for some applications, they're undetectable. They're the same as the rate of background mutations that we find in cells. So this really does raise the question, well, it looks like maybe one day they will be safe enough for reproduction. So one way to think about it is this. We've all got, I think, you know, five or six random mutations, say, in our germline. Now, if we use these technologies to make not a random mutations, but a specific change, um, then this doesn't seem any inherently more unsafe than other human practices of normal sexual reproduction. So if we view it like that, it may well be safe enough to proceed. Yeah, look, I think if you do have the view that any research involving human embryos is immoral, then of course you're going to be against these studies that use human embryos. But I might just say that if that's your view, then this study is a particularly novel challenge for you. Embryo research is being conducted in the UK and around the world. Um, I note that last year there were 20 active licenses to conduct for experiments to conduct um, embryo research in the UK. So this experiment is hardly novel in its use of human embryos. Um, I also note that it seems to be now 
rather than a strict prohibition on any embryo research, I think there is a general acceptance of some limited forms of embryo research. We know that embryos do not suffer as a result of the experimentation, and it then seems if we put other conditions on the embryo research, such that it is only performed on embryos that would otherwise have been destroyed, that is, they are left over from IVF, and the parents have given consent for the embryos to be used in this way, it does seem that that type of embryo research might be ethically acceptable. Right, so look, I don't think there's actually too much more to worry about about this particular study occurring in the UK with this good re regulatory environment and this strong oversight of scientific research. For me, the real um, concern about these technologies is what will happen in the rest of the world. So in other parts of the world, there's less strong oversight of scientific research, and there's also some places where there's no explicit ban on the reproductive uses of these technologies. So the real risk is that in one of these jurisdictions, there are people who are going to use this technology to create babies um, before the technique is ready. Um, and I think that is a real strong concern. So what we should be focusing on now is how do we get a worldwide sort of agreement on the limits of this technology and how do we get worldwide oversight of gene editing uses. Um, and that should be, I think, where the debate is focused on rather than these, what are, in my view, are not very risky studies occurring in the UK.